Hi everybody, this is Tina with Rehatch Designs. How are you guys doing? We had kind of uh, touched on doing the different elements of uh, decorating the ephemera and um, the pockets and done, all, you know, a few of those. And I kind of showed you the things that I had already done in the journal. And I just wanted to add a few more things on. Um, there, the video is getting a bit too long to show you everything. And of course, I can't show you everything because that would take forever. Um, but I do want to give you guys enough ideas if you're a beginner as to a lot of ways that you can customize your journal. Um, if you use a, um, a, a digital kit or even if you use scrapbook paper, if you want to make it your own and make it individual and custom, um, adding a lot of these different elements and doing different things to it, to me, that's what makes it unique and special and, and art. So, um, and the great thing about digital kits, I think, is it's a great um, starting point for a lot of people. I need it. Um, you know, it's really hard for me to start from scratch sometimes and not have anything um, in mind. And like my uh, niece had wanted a sunflower journal. And had I not gotten a digital kit, I just don't, I don't even know where I would start. Okay. So it helps you. Uh, move on and and uh, you add to and and do that and I think it's a great great starting point for people anyway this is where we're at with this um I did want to point one thing out is as full as this is getting we still have more things to add to it um but I I'm going to just kind of show you a few ideas of things that you could do um but I did want to point out that because we did a soft one signature journal, it is still very, uh, a very comfortable size. It fits in your hands. It's all squishy. I'm going to open it up. And, it, and the thing is, is that you can add a lot to it because of that. And also what's really important is that it lays flat and you wouldn't get that with a hardcover journal, um, necessarily unless you did some different spines that are a little bit more difficult so that's one reason why I like for people if you're a beginner to do that it gives you that um, you know feeling that it, it's it's gonna it's gonna work and you know you can put a lot in it and even though this is a bit of a gator mouth it's still because we made the spine big enough it will hold um, everything we're going to put in it okay so anyway I did want to show you that part of it so that you understand why we went that route um, instead of like an altered book I actually think this is easier and I think in the end you'll be happier with the finished product um, today I just kind of wanted I took that away too soon um, to go over just a few things with you that you can do. Um, when we made this tag, I'll pull it out. What I did is I just used, um, these are just um, some tags that we made with our Distress Oxide. And I will put that video in the description box, the link to it, because um, that's just a whole nother thing. Um, anyway, this is how they ended up, and as, as interesting as those are, there are other things you can do to them. On this, I didn't really do anything but add these elements to it to make this tag, okay? But if I want to do some other things, um, I just want to show you a few things that you could do with them besides just adding to it, okay? Um, I think that this looks pretty cool here anyway, but let me just give you an idea of what you can do. Um, let's see. We'll do that one first. Okay. So when you use Distress, distress Oxide, it is, um, 
it can um, react with water or it will react with water. And I like to do the thing where you take some of the ink off. And I have just a baby wipe here. You could just use water on a paper towel or something. And I will take just a baby wipe and go in and kind of rub a little bit not too hard but you're trying to pull the ink off is what you're doing and just take your finger and go in there with it and you're just you know and then move your wipe around a little bit so so you're not putting it on and you're just taking the ink off and the way this looks in the end you have to almost wait for it to dry because you're going to make it react again. And it's not going to be perfect because your, um, you know, your stencil might move a little bit or something. But it's supposed to just take the ink off. And then what that'll do is it'll give you just a little bit more interesting background. And just add a little bit of movement even though you know you got a lot going on with the distress oxides this just adds another texture or layer to it okay And this part to me of making a journal is the fun part. And I think I said it in my last video. If you're not having fun at this at this point, then you're doing something wrong because it really is the fun part, the decorating. Okay, so now I took that off. And you really can't tell that much yet. But when it completely dries, it adds all this additional texture to that. Um, tag that you didn't have before and the movement and a pattern and that's to me really cool um, you know and then you can add your other elements on top of it and I, I just really love how that looks um, let me see I think I have one dry over here that I can show you this one doesn't have as much to it but you can see it can really add a lot to it and then you can just add you know whatever you want on top of that and it'll be really cool okay so another thing I like to do is I like to add another dimension on there and I'm going to use this harlequin pattern here and I can you know maybe I'll do the other one like that I think it has more gold in it let me see yeah, I'll do this one. I I do a lot to my tags as I will take. Um, this is Vicky Booten and it's a texture paste. And I will take this lots of times. Let me get my little mat out here so I don't make a huge mess. I'll use the other one because it's kind of already messy. And I just take that. And I will put that on here. Yeah, this is a new new one. My other one's empty just about. I don't think I have enough in there to do it. Let me see. Yeah, maybe. No, not really. It's kind of thick. I can try it, but it's really thick. Yeah, it's pretty thick. Anyway. I will take this and this is at the bottom of the barrel so it's probably a little bit thicker than I like it but and I don't always just put it all the way across either I may just put it in spots okay And I probably won't put it all the way across on this because 
this stuff is normally not that thick. I just didn't want to open up the other one. And then I will do that. And I kind of like it to be like partial, not all the way. And pull that off. And this is a little bit thicker than it should be. But anyway, guys, so you would do something like that. And what that'll do is that'll add some texture. Let's see, that's a little bit too thick right there. But And the fact that it's chipping is a good thing, okay? And so then you would have that on your tag, and that adds some texture to it. I mean, you can do the whole thing, and I have before. I mean, I just don't always do that. I just like it to have more of a textured look to it. And then let that dry, and that's really cool. And then you put your elements on there. And that is a fun way to make that look a little bit different. Let's see. I'm going to put this over here. Get that out of the way. Okay, another thing that I like to do, oh, I got that on the wrong one. And you can use white texture paste, crackle paste, whatever you want to use. But um, I just used gold on that one because I thought it looked good. Another thing that I like to do is, and I did this on my other um, tag that I did, is I embossed on the elements of it. Let me see if I can get that out good. So I embossed these elements, okay, but not the actual tag. And that's the reason I like to do that is that really makes that pop. I mean, I can definitely put that die cut die cut on there just the way it is but when you do that it has with that glossy finish it really pops and you see those elements there and it really makes it pop okay now sometimes i like to do this to the tag itself and what i'll do let me do my hands here oops Um, and I have this Distress Embossing Glaze, and this is really interesting because it's, it's very, um, translucent, so it's a little different than, um, some other glazes, but it's really fun to use as a background, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off a little bit, um. So that's something um, that I like to do. Let me get my paper out here. I think I'd rather use this. It'll work better probably. So what I'm going to do is here I have a tag. And I've got some butterfly stamps over here. And let's see, I think I have my block here. What did I do with that? And so I'm going to take a few of these butterfly stamps and I am going to put them on here because I'm randomly going to just stamp all over. So it doesn't matter to me that they're on perfect. Put that here. I'm going to put a smaller one right here. So I'm just kind of putting them on kind of haphazardly. I don't know if I have a definite pattern in mind. Let me see. Can I put that guy up there? Maybe like that. Maybe put this one over here. I don't know. Anyway. So you get the idea. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to Take my Versamark and get that nice and on there good. And 
And I'm going to go ahead Okay, so do that. Do another spot. Really hard to tell. The one thing too is you're gonna see um you're just like it did with the stencil, this is gonna react because without even ever doing anything else to it. And I I know some of these are gonna come off the page, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go like that. And then maybe, I don't know, I know I have ink on this down here. I'm trying not to overlap too much, but I may. Okay, and I don't know if there's any ink left on that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my, what color is this? This is, what did I say? Antique linen. I don't think I opened that all the way. Hold on. Okay. That does seem like we need a little bit more in the middle. I think I'm going to take this other butterfly that I haven't used. Let's see. And I am going to put him. I can tell I've got a spot in the middle. It doesn't have anything. I'm going to do it before it dries. Okay, so now I'm going to just take this, and remember our colors, we're using the orange and the, you know, the orange and the yellow and a lot of that, so. All right, so anyway, and I just do that kind of loosen it up. I don't need it perfect on there because, you know, I'm not looking for perfect. I'm looking for a background. So now let me go ahead and put that back in here. Okay, so now And I usually use my tweezers. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, so this is what we end up with. And it is a really cool pattern. And of course, you could do this with clear and it would have a similar effect. Um, now, I have different colors. Like, if you wanted more of a contrast, you could do something like the turquoise or whatever. But I'm not really looking for that because this is going to be a background to a tag. And, I, you know, I want it to be see-through. And so that is a cool way to add a background to your tag. And then again, make something very, very unique. So um, I thought I'd show you this, too. If you wanted to, you could use a stencil and you could um, emboss that way and have that on there. I mean, there's just a lot of different things that you can do that can add a lot of character. And here's our other one that we did that's got a little bit more. It's a little bit drier than it was before. And so you can see that it reactivated the um, color in there. So... Anyway, that is a few things that you can do. Here's our other one, and it's already dry. And so this is kind of cool. Um, 
you can take off the high parts if you want but I actually really like it and then you know put whatever you want on there here's another one and here's our tag that we did nothing with so you know think about doing things like that to really add a lot of character to your journal one of the things that's really fun to do also I love to make envelopes and put them in my journals um, I like to make them from scratch but then I also like to decorate too I've got a couple let me see I'll pick a couple of these out I'm going to pick these two out um, and this is um, these are just super crayons and they're gel crayons and they're washable so that means that they um, they work uh, with water and that means that they react with water and there's a lot of different colors in here and the reason I'm showing you these is that I have some distress crayons down here that I use and honestly guys these react very similar um, gelatos react that way um, so you could use these to decorate um, a uh, an envelope okay and then add to it and I'll show you what I mean by that um, along with distress ink which I think which is totally a fun thing to do. Um, let's see, I'm going to try and add some different colors in here. I don't know if I should do just the crayons first. So let me try that first and then what I do on my distress, oh, I don't have one on there. I don't have, I said that. Is I just take, let's just say I take my Distress Oxide. You know, somebody was asking, I think on a Facebook post, if it's worth it. These react so differently than any other ink that I think these are worth it. And I honestly couldn't understand what all the hubbub was about until I got them. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go kind of in different spots around here. around the edges just to kind of fill it in maybe a little bit right here okay so I don't have a different um, dauber for each one like I know a lot of people do but I don't I just use these and I put a piece of velcro on the bottom and then um which i didn't do on these two i don't know why maybe i hadn't used them or something so that was um fossilized amber and this is uh spiced marmalade and i don't have all the colors but i just kind of picked some that i thought i might use and i just add whenever i can get them on sale And I'm using this kind of as a background just to kind of color my envelope. Oh, you know what? I completely forgot to do the front. I'm going to do that a little bit. Because you really want to. In fact, I'll just use this other bobber here so I have two. This is the one I use on my distress ink, but I just took the thing off. And I'm just doing this to put some background color on here. And of course, you could use watercolors. You could use whatever you want. Oops. And of course, this envelope has been coffee dyed. So it's going to probably fall apart. 
Um, that's okay. We can glue it back together. And I'm not really paying any attention to where I'm putting the color. I'm just putting it down. Okay. I don't want those on there, but those will go away. I'm just trying to add a couple of different colors on there. Okay, so now I've got that on there as a base. And like I said, you could use a watercolor, anything you want. Um, I think probably I'm going to try and add some other color in there so it looks a little different. And I'm going to take, I have all of these over here. get those out i'm not gonna really i need a little green too i think i'll use this bright green even though i have a bright green over there i don't think i want to use any of the pinks maybe some of the gold and they've got this color here that color yellow and then this color yellow okay so why don't i do that those are the colors i'm going to be using oh maybe this green also all right, so I'm going to take that and I'm just going to start adding color in different spots. I'm just kind of add it all the way around. Okay. Maybe some of this bright green. I have a feeling you won't be able to see that. That's probably going to just blend in. How about this orange? This is very bright. There we go. I'll see if I can find the link to these and put them out there. I bought them so long ago. Um, so I'm not sure that you'd be able, I can find them, but I will try. I'm going to do I'm going to do some stuff with these in a minute, but I want you to be able to distinctly see the difference, okay? Um just in case. Let's see. I used that one, but this is a little bit darker. All right. And maybe a little bit of this gold cuz it might be a little bit darker than the other yellow oh i forgot to do the other side again here we go again and i know this looks crazy guys but it will look cool in a minute and i'm just trying to get color all over and different colors, not all the same. I completely forgot. And I always do a little bit of the inside. I mean, you do it however you want to do it. I decided that other bright green doesn't really show up. I mean, that other bright, yeah, okay. All right, now I'm going to just take move this out of the way. I never know. I'm always dropping stuff. When I go and I clean up my craft room, it's just amazing what I find. Okay, so now I'm going to take my, just a, a regular brush. And let me get my water. And I just have a little bit of water, just plain old water. And I'm going to do that. Get it a little wet. Take my wipe.
And all I'm doing is kind of smishing it around and blending it together. Now you can do this just with the wipe and not put the water on. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing up here, but I'm trying to activate the color that's underneath it too. Okay. So the more water you add, the more it's going to blend and that's kind of what we're trying to do um let me get the other side i'll do it just with the wipe you can see when your wipe gets a little bit too um too much on it just get another one because then it'll get a bit muddy And I know this looks crazy, but we're going to do something else to this in a minute. And you'll see. And all you're doing this for is you're just adding color. Um, and this is very bright, but this is kind of what our journal is all about. So. And I mean, this is not the only way to put color down, but it is a way. Okay, and then I think we got one spot there. I'm trying not to rub there too much because I'm afraid I'm going to put a hole in my... So anyway, we have some color there now. And we've taken this completely white envelope and com and made it... Um, we've added color to it. So now we can add things on top of that. I'm going to go ahead and glue that. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry it a little bit so that it's not going to fall apart. But... I'm going to glue that there because it's falling apart. It was already kind of like that anyway because it was coffee dyed. And I really could have used a not coffee dyed one. It wouldn't have been probably as weak as this. Okay, so then, and you know, you can gesso this or something beforehand if you want it to be a little bit stronger. But I usually don't, so. All right, I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay, so we went ahead and dried it, and now we have this multicolored little um, envelope. And it worked great to put some color on there and then blend it. You can blend it as much as you want. I mean, just depends on what you're looking for. Um, I, you know, I... I really like it the way it is because when you put other stuff on it, I still want to be able to, to see that there are different colors. And Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got this um, napkin and I'm going to use this. But first, I have to separate it. As you know, there's always more than one layer on there. Let me get this next layer. There's always, usually three layers. Sometimes there's two, but most of the time there's three. On there. And you just use tape. I save this, um, this white thin layer because there's some really fun stuff you can do with that. Not to mention you can, I've used it just to wipe things up. Okay, so I'm going to try and put a few things on here. And um, I do not have anything with sunflowers. I was looking through all of my stuff and I didn't have anything. So I'm just going to kind of do that with this. I've got, let's see. I guess I could put that on there. I'm just going to kind of go around it. Pull that off. And then this is just a water. It's filled with water. Um, you can do the same thing with um, just using a paintbrush and going around and wetting it. Which reminds me, I always like to put my water in my little container over here because 
I don't want it to spill, which I usually end up knocking it over. So there's one. And let's see. I can get a couple of these butterflies and a bird. Let's see. Okay, so now we have this piece to pull from. So I could put a few yellow flowers in there. Hmm. I'll put that one in there. And I know it's going to take more than I'm doing, but I'm only going to show you part of it just because we have a lot to cover. Hmm. I want a butterfly too, so. All I'm going to do now, and I'm only going to do one side of this just so that you guys can get an idea, is I'll just place these where I think I might want them. Um, put that up here. Maybe put that right here. Maybe put that right there. You get the idea. That's what we're doing. So maybe put that there and then that there. I don't know. Well, I guess the bird shouldn't be on the ground, should it? Okay. I'm going to do this quickly. You guys do it however you think you want to do it. You have that leaning off. And then maybe like that. Okay, so... I am just going to, at this point, take my glue stick, all right, and temporarily glue these down. Now, I don't like that straight edge on that, so I'm going to kind of cut that a little bit. And that's just going to go, that's just to kind of put it where I want it. And I want this kind of hanging off because I'm going to mess with that in a minute. Go right here. Go right there. And I'm doing this very haphazardly, but you guys take your time with it. Oh, I don't like that little piece right there. There we go. see do I want to put that there yeah I think I do okay and I don't like that writing there so I'm going to take that off in a minute and I'll put the little butterfly right there okay now all I do here I'm going to take this on the end and I'm going to get that piece off right there and that helps get that off. Okay, if there's any little writing or anything I don't want on there, or any little part that I don't like, I just take that and pull it off. I'm going to leave that that way. I think it looks okay. I am going to stamp over this in a minute, but Oop, wrong thing. Wrong top. Wrong top. That doesn't go on there. Okay. Oop, wait. I didn't do this edge here either. I just take that and it pulls it off right at the edge. Okay. And then just do that. And you know, whatever napkin you have or whatever piece that you have, use that. Okay, don't feel like you have to um, fill the whole thing either because we're going to add stuff to this. And of course, I would put stuff on the other side too, but I'm not doing that now just because we have very limited time. Okay, so now I'm going to just take my, 
and this is just a matte gel and I like to use it because it, it's not shiny um, when I use it and that's kind of why I like it okay so anyway where did my little mat go so all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and so I had glued that down with my glue stick and it doesn't have any glue underneath it so I will do that usually it goes through it so I don't worry about it but and if it has a little wrinkle here and there that's fine with me I don't care because I think it adds to the character and you could certainly um, go in closer and not have as much of the white um, showing but I think in the end what ha it'll it'll just kind of blend in so and I'll show you a way to make it blend in a little bit more but anyway so this is just a fun way to decorate an envelope okay and um, add some character to your journal when I love doing this. It's a lot of fun. And I usually go over the whole piece um, because it actually adds a little bit more stiffness to the um, envelope and makes it a little bit stronger. Just kind of smush it all down. And that smooths it all right and that glues it all down and when you're doing this your glue has water in it so it is going to reactivate your color underneath so remember when I told you don't worry about getting it all um, smeared together perfectly you see how it all is kind of blending in again blending in again and that's what it'll do and part of the reason you do that is that it helps um, hide the little pieces from the um, paper all right so I'm going to dry that real quick and I'll be right back I went ahead and dried this um, at this point you can see it blends in quite a bit more but you can still blend it in even more than that I went ahead and put a few things on the back just because you know I didn't want to just not have anything well actually this is the front but um, what I do after that is I will take just a nail file and the little loose edges that you have this will just file them right off okay so just do that if you've got little edges there even though we did it with our water I mean you can trim it but this works really well okay and then you've got that off just do that all the way around um, it tore that a little bit but that's okay no big deal it's not going to really make any difference in the end. It's not part of the flower, but I'm going to take this little edge off. There we go. We're missing color there, but that's okay because we're going to fix it in a minute. But anyway, just do that. Get the loose pieces off. And I'm not doing them all, but I'm just showing you. And then what I do is I take this same nail file and I kind of smooth out any rough edges that are on there and that's okay if it takes part of it off it's supposed to look distressed and I just do that okay and that kind of gets all the little rough edges down basically doing the same thing that you're doing on the ends And I'm not going to do it perfectly now because, you know, 
you just do that. I don't know if it does get any of it off, and it makes it look more like it's painted on there. Looks like I got more down on the bottom that I didn't get off. And I do have a sanding block too, but if you don't have that, I guess I just really did a bad job of putting that bottom part on there, so. Or it wasn't dry all the way, one of the two. I think it wasn't dry all the way. Okay. So, anywhere you have a lot of white or whatever, you can take your Distress um, crayon or just your regular crayon and go in there and add some color right to those edges, okay? I'm adding this kind of yellow color. You can add any color you want. And that is going to make it blend in a little bit more. I want to do a different color because then you won't even be able to see. This will blend in so much. And that will help kind of make it blend a little bit more. Very easy to do. And then you just take your, um, let's see, I don't think that wipe is wet enough anymore. Let me get another one. What did I do with them? I buried them under here somewhere. Okay, there they are. Okay, just get a wipe and just kind of go just like you did before, only you're going to do it. Um, right over wherever you put the crayon and that is just going to help blend it in a little bit I mean you can use a paintbrush if you want to but you know add the color to it and kind of blends it in now I sometimes it just depends on what I'm doing I sometimes will go ahead and um you know, put distress ink or something over it too. And I might do that to this. I don't know yet. I haven't really decided. I wiped off a little bit too much of the spots. Okay. And it's just going to blend in like it did before. Let me see if I do the paintbrush. If it won't come off as easily. Just doing that. And all I'm doing is just kind of going over it lightly just so that I don't want to take too much off. I just want to kind of blend it so it's not doesn't look like I just did what I did and colored it on there. And that just adds some color to those piece, places that were white. So... I think that might work a little bit better. I think the wipe wipes too much of it off. Okay. And it'll it'll blend in the colors that you have underneath it again because once it's gonna it reacts to water, okay? And so once you do that, you won't even really notice the little white parts on there. You could just leave it like that if you want to. Um, I haven't done the back, but basically you're going to do the same thing. That's a bit bright, isn't it? Okay, let's see. We'll see how that works out. And honestly, guys, these crayons work really well. Um, I know distressed crayons are great too, but um, I just think that depending upon what you're wanting to do with them this works fine and they were very inexpensive so you're just trying to find a way to put color on your whatever it is you're doing i mean we're not doing fine art when we're making junk journals so um i do think that the distress crayons um 
they dry a little bit more, um, a little quick, more quickly, which may be good or bad depending upon what you're doing. So that's something to consider. But I'm going to show you that in a minute on something else. But Okay, so you can see I have blended the white away. That's what we're trying to do. And of course, you can blend it more than that. I'm doing it, you know, very quickly just so I can show you the next step. But it takes away all of that little white that you get from your napkin. When you do that, and it makes it blend a whole lot better, and there you go, you've got this very decorated um, uh, thing. Now let me show you something else. Now that I've done that, um, you can see how it really does a great job of blending in all the little pieces. I could do a little more here or here. But anyway, you get the idea. It just kind of makes it look like it's been painted on. And that's kind of the point. Um, and then what I do, I, this is, um, this is a permanent ink and you need a permanent ink. I'm using watering can. It's kind of a gray color um, instead of black, but you could use black. I am just going to take um, just some script uh, I don't even remember where I got this, but anyway, I'm just going to take it and kind of go do that in a few places just to kind of give it a little bit more character. And you don't have to do this part, guys. This is totally up to you. Um, that's why I said I wasn't too worried about the letters and things on there. Let me take some of this. This is one that has some other stuff on it. And you can use a lighter color. You could use not any at all if you want to. So, And I just do that. Um, just to kind of give it a little bit more character. Make it blend all in. And I have some other ones I kind of like better than this script. But this was what was handy. So anyway. But I do that. I'll do it up here. I try and do it lightly, but sometimes not so much. And I'm doing it in a hurry. So again, you guys do it however it works for you. Okay, so then anyway, that's what I've done. And I usually don't do much else to it than that. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for and what you want in your envelope. This is just a rough idea of the things that you can do but this then makes a very custom accent that you can put in your journal that um you know if you want to put a stamp on it and do all that then maybe you wouldn't put as much on there i probably would put this in there the way it is um you know and uh to me it looks makes it look like it's painted on Whereas it's not just stuck on there because you're blending it in there. And that's just something that you may want to consider um, doing. Um, it's a fun thing to add in there. Like maybe, you know, tuck somewhere in there with a special note or special ephemera, whatever. But anyway, that's one thing. Um, another thing that I like to do, um, glassine bags. Here, I'll get a couple of them. Um, they're fun to do, and you um, definitely can do a lot of different things with these. I like to add um, color to them. Let me do this quickly, because I am running out of time here. This time I'm going to do it with my um, distress crown so that you can see. The difference and all I'm gonna do let's see I'm gonna, that's the front I'm not gonna do the back because I think I'm gonna glue these on and I'm just putting some color all over this 
This time I'm not using my Distress Oxide. I'm just using the crayons. And these are just, that is Spiced Marmalade. And this is Mustard Seed, which is kind of a bright yellow. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing it on both. I don't need to do it on both. I'm just going to show you one. Um, and I'm just adding color kind of like we did with the other one. Only I don't already have my Distress Oxide down there. And then I'm just going to take my water. Let me get it over here. And where did my wipes go? Here we go. I'm going to take my wipe first. And I'm going to go. And that's the one thing I noticed on the, um, the, the stress crayons seem to, um, they dry a little bit quicker. And I don't know that they blend as well. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. So I'm just going to take that and kind of blend it. And my only purpose is to put color down on this. So I kind of don't want those lines there. So I don't know what's going on. So I do want you to see this. Okay. So you can still kind of see the lines. Um, I don't know that it blends as well, but it does It does put the color down on there. And I think what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead. I think what I'm going to do with that is I just want a little bit more color on there. And I want it to blend a little bit better. I don't think that this getting it wetter will make any difference no not really see I don't think that they blend quite as well um, I think they dry quicker and it's just a different different kind of look so you know I guess it just depends on what you want so I'm going to take some of my distress oxide that I had and I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over this a little bit just to kind of blend the color a little bit more. And I don't want it to be too, um, and just put a little bit more color down. Okay, I don't know if that made any real difference at all, but okay, so I'm going to dry that real quick. All right, so I went ahead and dried it, and it did seem to blend a little bit more, you know, as it sat. Um, I probably just didn't give it enough time, but I do think adding the extra Distress Ink gave it the look I wanted. Now, what I want to do now is I have these, um, this is tissue paper from Tim Holtz, and I am going to take, eh, let's see. I think this middle section right here, and I'm going to use my little water dilly bobby thing. I don't know what you call it. I don't know what the official name for it is, but get it going. It has to get some water in there. And I am just going to kind of go around that. I know it's bigger than what I need, but this stuff is cool because... It does have some really cute patterns, and I have some that has numbers, and some that has maps, and just really, it's fun to use, and I just forget to use it sometimes. And honestly, guys, this is the part that makes doing junk journals fun, is using all this cool stuff, and playing with all different mediums, and um, I think that's why I like it so much, so if I didn't get to do this part, it probably would not be fun okay so um so now I'm going to try and figure out how I want that on there so I want both the birds and the nest so how about if I do that would that work you think okay so you guessed it I'm going to use my matte, matte gel medium but I am going to glue this down first 
and that's just to kind of keep it in where I want it. I don't put a lot of glue on. I just put enough to hold it. Besides, my glue stick is empty, so. Okay, so now i got to reposition that again. I want both birds on there without looking too weird. Okay. I think that would probably work right there. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, that's basically the idea. And of course then, we're going to do the same thing that we did the last time. My brush. And now I just do this. Let me get my mat out again. What did I do with it? I put it back. How about that? And there we go. get under there it doesn't go through this as well as it does the napkin so I kind of have to make sure I get some glue underneath okay and then kind of smooth it out a little bit and again this activates the um, color underneath it so you're going to end up kind of blending it even more okay so you guessed it we're going to dry it and then we'll be right back okay so I went ahead and dried it and there we go with that so it really makes it blend in really well um, honestly I think they work very similar so it's up to you what you want to want to do. Um, I went ahead and bought these, and um, I just don't. I can't tell a lot of difference, so that's just my opinion. Um, up to you, but that wasn't really the point. The point was to kind of show you how to do this, where you can blend it in really well and make it um, something, um, you know, just a little bit, a little bit. Um, different that you can put in your journal now i might on this i could maybe just stamp it a little bit um, like we did with the other ones just because there is writing already on there so just take my stamp again and maybe just do a little bit just to kind of make it look like it's all continuous all the way across you know, just to do that. And I didn't do the other side because I'm going to glue this in and it's just going to be like a pocket. And then, you know, I did do both sides of that. So anyways, that is just a couple ideas along with the tags on how to personalize your journal. Um, all there really is left is to fill the journal at this point. And that is just a matter of putting things in spots and you deciding what you want to do. All right, so take care, guys.